check 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 welcome back to another video today we're following up on our notes on family trees aka pedigrees check that out off the top no no written all freestyle all right back to business though so if you made it to this video you're looking to learn more about pedigrees and you're also looking to get that free 100 in this six weeks grade book so the way it's going to work is i need you to put a check mark next to the problems i tell you to and then you're going to put a star next to the problems that i tell you to in this video check mark means these are ones that i'm going to go over with you right now and as practice and then the ones with an asterisk or a star are going to be ones that you work on by yourself now please remember in order for you to get credit for this, it needs to be 100% filled out, including the problems we do together and then the problems you do on your own. I want you to try your best. Don't get extremely caught up on if it's wrong or if it's right. I want you to use the information from our notes and our practice and see what you can do on your own. As always, you know, you can always come find me if you need help. So first thing we're going to do, let's put a check next to next to number one. A check mark next to number flip it over and go to number five we're going to put a check mark next to number five so i'm going to walk you through number five number one and i think we can squeeze one more Let's do let's do number four together. So we're gonna do problems one, four, and five together, which means you're gonna be responsible for doing two and three on your own. All right, are you ready? Boom, let's do this. All right, number one. So in humans, albinism is an autosomal recessive trait that leads to very light skin, hair, and eyes. We know if it has the big A or the dominant allele, you'll be normal. If it has the recessive allele or the little A, then you will have albinism. So as always with these problems, first thing we need to do is identify autosomal. So we know it's not sex linked. Not sex linked. And then recessive means it's going to have to have the little a. So if it's filled in, so if it has little a, it has, has albinism has to be little a, little a, and it's going to be filled in. So let's look at the first part. 1A says it's autosomal. So do you have to worry about gender? We already figured it out. It's not sex linked. So the answer is no. How many generations are they? Well, we have one generation here, two generations here. And then three generations here. And then one more because we have a child here. So we have a total of four generations. Now, if we look at C, how many kids did the first generation have? So remember, this line in between is directly in between a square and a circle. Means this genetic male and this genetic female, they had a child, here are their children. So generation one has two kiddos. Here's the fun one. D, how many great grandkids are there? Well, again, if we look at this, we can see there's the parents, the parents have kids, the kids have kids, which would be the grandkids. 
the grandkid, the granddaughter has a child with this male. They have a kid, which is the grandkid. There is one grandkid. The other two grandchildren have not had kids yet. Okay. Now, we're going to part E. We're going to put the genotype for each individual and we're going to put it in the blank that's provided. So because this is not sex linked and it's recessive, we can go already. The easiest thing to do is to go ahead and figure out our shaded ones, right? Because we know without a doubt if it's shaded, it means it has the trait. So it has to have little a, little a. So little a, little a is going to go here. I know this person, they have it. So their genotype is going to be little a, little a. Little a, little a, little a, little a, okay? So now we're going to work our way through. So we know if it's not shaded, it means what? They don't show the trait. So which means they have to have at least one big letter, right? So I'm going to put big A for both. Now, because they have children, one has little a, little a, there has to be something that came from mom, something that came from dad. So I'm going to put little a here, little a here. So again, this little a came from mom, this a, this little a came from dad. We know that because it's shaded here. So if it's shaded, filled in, I know it's got to be little a, little a. Let's look at their son. Square representing boy. So the boy is not shaded in, right? And so we're looking at this, and you can kind of look ahead, but if you look here, this son ends up with a daughter right here, or I'm sorry, a son right here that is big A, or is this little a, little a? So because I'm looking at this, this little a belongs to these two. So he had to get it from somewhere. He had to get one a, little a from dad, one little a from mom. So I'm gonna put little a, little a. And of course, because it's not shaded in, so I know it's gonna be big A, big A. Does everybody understand that? I know it's a little confusing because I kind of just work my way around. But when you do this, pedigrees are fun because it's like puzzle pieces. You're putting puzzle pieces together. And so that's what you have to figure out. So, again, because this represents they had a baby. Here are the three kids. This son is little a, little a. He had to get one a from dad, one a from mom. But because mom and dad are not filled in, we know they have at least one dominant allele, which means that's why they're not shaded in. But if we look at their other two kids, <clears throat> let's figure out what they have. Same thing, right? Now, this one, again, we're looking at this daughter. They branched off, met this guy. They had a kid. Their kid also ended up with little a, little a. So if we look back at mom and dad her parents were both big a little a big a little a but she had a child that is little a little a so we know this child got a little a from dad and a little a from mom so i'm going to put a little a there but what do we know about mom just by looking at this picture she's not shaded in that's correct so because she's not shaded in she gets the big A. Okay. And then the last one, we're looking at this girl here. Now, we know she's not shaded in. So we know at least she has one big letter, one big A. But because she has not branched off and had kids, the only way for us to know definitively, based on our pedigree, if she was big A, little A, or big A, big A, 
she would have to have a kid and then we could determine whether or not we could narrow down what she would be. But for here, you're going to put big A, big A, or she could be big A, little A. There's not enough information out right now to decide what she would be. Everybody get that? If not, go back, watch the video again, rewind if you need to. Um, but I, this is the same process I would go through every question. If it tells you if it's autosomal or recessive, and then kind of figure it out what's the easiest thing you can fill in. So let's flip it over. Hopefully you got that. Give you a few seconds. All right, let's flip it over. Let's work on number four. So number four tells us attached earlobes are recessive. So we're going to fill it in. Underline that. Recessive. While unattached earlobes are dominant. Determine the genotype of each individual. And then here are our alleles. We have a big E allele. is going to represent unattached earlobes. And then little e is going to represent attached earlobes. So it's recessive, right? It's autosomal. Do we have to worry about gender? No. First thing being is, so if it's Attached, if it's recessive, they're going to have it. What do they need to have to be recessive? It has to be the littles. So it's going to be filled in, and the genotype is going to be little e, little e. Now, if they unattached because it's dominant, then they don't have it. The box is going to be blank, and we know there's going to be at least one big E. This space means there could be a big E there or a little e, but we know at least we're going to have at least one big E. So let's label out. First thing we're going to do is label our individuals. So this is person one, two, three, and four okay so the first thing we're going to do is let's figure out our genotypes of everybody again the easiest thing to do is because we know if it's filled in it's going to be ee -E. we can go ee -E here ee -E. ee -E. E, E, and then E, E. All right, so I got all my shaded in was done. Now we can work through this and figure out what each genotype is. So because it's blank, we know it's going to have at least one big letter. So go ahead and each one put at least one big E. How do we know that? Because we determined it here, if it's blank, it's going to have at least one big E. So let's start working our way through this. So first thing is, we want to look at, well, these between one and two, the line represents they had a baby. Here are the four babies. We know that two of the boys ended up with big E, little e, because we know from genetics, they have to get one from mom, one from dad. So we know both genotypes are going to be big E, big E, little e, big E, little e. Okay. So here. For this daughter, this is a unique one. She could be big E, big E, or big E, little E. Just like our previous example, there's not enough information for us to know whether or not she would have, uh, whether or not she would have the big E, big E, or big E, little E. 
again, in order for us to know, she would have to branch out, have a kid, and then we could determine which genotype she was. So let's go over here and let's look at the second generation. We'll put two here. And this is our third generation right there. So now let's look at generation two. Let's look at the son. Now he has a line between him and this female or this genetic female. So that lets us know that they had a baby. Now they had two girls. One girl ended up with little E, little E. Again, we know she has to get one from dad one for mom so we figured out that this is here now the second little girl they had it could be she could have gotten she could be big e big e or big e little e now the last part we need to do is figure out here. So can individual one, four, be E, E? Oh, my lights went out. Give me a second. All right, sorry about that, y'all. Lights went out. So where were we? Yes, here. So now the question is, can individual one dash four be E, E? So this first number here represents the generation we're talking about. And then if we count four, first generation number four is right here. Can this person be big E, big E? What do y'all think? You're correct. No. This person can't be big E, big E. Why? Because number four is here with this person. And they had a baby. And you end up with little e, little e. So they have to get one from dad, one from mom, which means four has to be big E, little e. All right, we got time for one more right in the nick of time. So the last one we're going to do, number five. Number five says... Muscular dystrophy, Duchenne, muscular dystrophy, is a X-linked recessive trait. It, progressive, it causes progressive muscle breakdown and weakness. So, it's a sex-linked, or it's X-linked. Do you have to worry about gender? Yes, you do. Because it says X-linked, that lets us know we're dealing with the Sex chromosomes. So, yes, we have to worry about sex now. We have to worry about the sex chromosome. So, recessive, meaning it is going to be is going to be filled in. So it has it filled in. And then we're going to represent it with recessive lowercase d. Now, the easiest thing to do is to figure out what are the genotypes of the males and the females that have it. So, if they have it, or we'll put has it, we know it's going to be X, the exponent of little d, and then it's going to have, that's for our, our male, and then our female going to be x with the exponent of little d. Same thing here. What's the genotype of somebody if they don't have it? The genotype would be for our male and for our female it would be x Exponent big D So again, this shows us the genotype of a male who does not have the muscle dis the muscular dystrophy 
because again, he has the dominant allele. And then this is our female here, XX with the big D, big D, XX, big D, little D, okay? So now the easiest thing to do when you're looking at sex link traits on a pedigree, hopefully I have enough time to show you all this. Easiest thing to do is to go through and first just do all your XYs, XYs, right? So everywhere that I see that it is uh, male, I'm just going to put XY. 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 I think that's all the XYs, right? So now I took care of all, all the males on the pedigree. And for the females, I'm going to do the same thing. XX. 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 Now, what's easier to do? We know what's shaded in, so we already know what it has to have. So let's do that first. So it's a female. It's shaded in. So we know it has to be X with the exponent little d. If we go down, we know the same thing has to be here. So we're going to add in that, that. And we're doing this for everything that's shaded. So we did the shaded one, right? So now we can go back through and we can figure out, we know for males, it's gonna be easy. If they don't show, if they're not shaded for males, we're just gonna put that there. Now, if you look at offspring, we can show It'll show us why we get the genotypes that we get. So these two had kids. Here are the kids. Again, they get one from dad, one from mom. We know this female is going to have X, big D, and then the little D there. Because again, we know mom has a recessive trait. Dad has the dominant allele, so he passes on to the daughter. Same thing here. This daughter goes out. She gets married. Same thing here. This child gets one allele from dad, one from mom. Now, we don't know for sure. We know for sure the one she gets from dad is going to be dominant. But because mom is heterozygous, which means she would have uh, the big D and little d, this daughter could be this genotype or this genotype. So we're going to put a little question mark because we don't have enough information for this one to figure out what she could be. So just remember, uh, sex link chromosomes. It's only carried on the X, which is why you don't see anything after the Y. And then our question B, how many carriers are they? Well, if we're looking at this, we have one for sure carrier. And that's going to be this person here because, again, they're heterozygous because they have the X big D, X little D, which means they don't show the trait, but they could carry it. So... That would be your carrier. Um, so there's that. I think I got it in in the time limit. If you have any questions, come see me for tutorials. I'll try to put up another video, uh, probably one over sex link traits, because I know I went through this one kind of fast. Um, again, remember, you're now responsible for doing questions two and three on your own. Good luck. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.